I bought this Honda Vision 110 or NSC as it's known on other markets new just over 12 months ago and so I thought this was a good time to give you my impressions of this simple but endearing little scooter perhaps unusually I'll be giving you my opinion as a biker I own and have owned a number of big bikes more of which later but I really get a lot of pleasure from this little scooter and today I'm going to tell you why you might too I'll quickly take you through the minor modifications I've made and then talk about what I like and don't like about the bike after 2000 kilometers. The first mod was carried out by the dealer before delivery. I asked them to swap the original tyres for some Michelin Pilot streets. The original tyres looked okay but I'd never heard of the brand and as the scooter was originally intended for my wife I didn't want to take any chances. Soon after getting the scooter I installed this Puj 9340 screen. Uh, if I'm perfectly honest it didn't really make that much difference either to the wind hitting my face, I'm six foot three, or to my chest area. I'm sure it must make a slight difference but I can't really feel it. I've left the screen in place but honestly I wouldn't bother again. Perhaps a taller screen would be more effective but I like my bikes to look as good as they can and I just don't go for humongous screens. The next mod was very easy, a little self-adhesive analogue clock sourced online for about five euros. It just makes life a little bit easier, saves me having to pull out my phone to check the time. Prone to theft you might think, but it was cheap enough so I'll take my chances. The final accessory is one I put on all my bikes grip puppy foam grips or covers that slide with some difficulty over the factory grips. These provide a softer, fatter grip for my hands and also help to eliminate some of the vibrations through the handlebars. The Vision is actually very good for vibration but every little helps. I would go for the genuine grip puppies though because although they appear expensive for a couple of rubber tubes, they are well made using dense high quality foam and cheaper models will begin to break down and fray after only a few hundred kilometers. So what do I think of the Honda Vision? Let me take you through one or two of the bad points. Well, I suppose that's a bit unfair. They're not so much bad points as things I miss from my other larger motorcycles when I'm on the Vision. The first most obvious downside, of course, is the power. We're talking just shy of 11 horsepower. To put this in some kind of context, it's approximately double what you get from a lawnmower. Not a ride-on model, but one that you walk behind. So considerably down on the Triumph rocket I have on order, now you know why this channel is called Rocket Man, uh, or even my 47, 48 horsepower Honda CB500X. I weigh about 90 kilos, my wife's about 50 kilos, so you can imagine that adding 140 kilos to a bike that only weighs 110 dry to begin with and only produces 11 horsepower is not going to give you electrifying performance. However, you would be surprised this bike is light. It has skinny tires and gives instant oomph from the twist and go throttle. It's almost like an electric bike in its low speed pickup and in real world traffic can easily get away from the lights more quickly than most cars. I've never measured it but I'd be prepared to wager that a 0 to 30, 0 to 20 kph acceleration is better than most vehicles you encounter in city centres. We've been two up on some twisty hillside roads and despite my fears the vision coped remarkably well. Realistically you're looking at about 80 kph, 50 miles an hour maximum speed but how often do you need to do more than that in the city anyway? I have been on dual carriageways and while it can be done at a pinch, I wouldn't really recommend it as a long-term commuting solution. The problem is that there's no margin for error if you're more or less constantly on full throttle. I've ridden a slightly more powerful Honda PCX and Honda Forza 125s and to be honest, they're no better. The Vision also offers superior filtering in heavy traffic thanks to its much slimmer design. I also owned a Honda Monkey 125 for about six months alongside the Vision and found the Vision actually to be much faster in the real world. The twist and go makes it just so quick off the line. No need to think about depressing the clutch with your left hand. 
engaging first with your left foot, then matching the revs as you pull away before having to kick up into second, etc. Now with the vision, you just twist the throttle with your right hand and you're away. Perhaps a bigger problem than the power is the general lack of road presence. There are many scooters here in Portugal and drivers are generally respectful of our diminutive stature, but while perfect for filtering in traffic, the slim bodywork of the vision does mean that you are less visible and I do sometimes feel more vulnerable than I do say on my CB500X adventure bike. The Vision has dip beam on permanently as well as two fairly feeble side light things but compared to other bikes modern LEDs these are a bit poor. So the good points and let's begin with the running costs. Compared to all other vehicles I currently own or have owned in the past, the Honda Vision feels like free transportation. Of course it isn't free, but it's so cheap that to all intents and purposes and compared to other means of transport it does feel genuinely free. Obviously you have to swallow the initial purchase price of about 2,200 euros I think it was plus a couple of hundred for the Michelin tyres I put on and the inevitable taxes. Uh, from then on though, it is virtually free. I average about 175 miles per gallon or 1.6 litres per 100 kilometres and despite using the scooter at least once a day, I can easily go four or five weeks without filling up and when I do, I'm lucky to squeeze five euros worth of petrol into the tank. I took the bike in for its first service in January 2019 after 1000 kilometers and was charged the princely sum of 36 euros. Compare this with the 100 euros I was billed for my CB500X last month and the 230 euros I paid for the same service on my Triumph Street Triple a couple of years ago. I've already alluded to other benefits of the bike, diminutive size even compared to other scooters, which makes filtering in traffic a breeze, great maneuverability thanks to a tight turning circle and the general stability and comfort uh, from its relatively long wheelbase and large wheels, 16 inch on the front from the 2018 model year onwards. There's ample room for my six foot three frame to stretch out and the step through flat floor is great for carrying the odd shopping bag between your feet. The under seat storage is large enough for a few groceries though as you can see only small jet style open face helmets are going to fit in there. My other open face helmet, a showy J Cruise, will not fit and neither will of course full face helmets. Honda do provide two small hooks, uh, peg things under the seat which you can attach a second or larger helmet to, although these will of course be exposed to the elements and prying eyes. So why do I hang on to this scooter when I've got other more exciting bikes to ride? In a nutshell because it's just so easy to ride, practical to park and cheap to own. Yes, I suppose a 250-300cc version would be nice, but then of course you'd need bigger brakes, better suspension, etc, and the costs would spiral. As things stand, the Honda Vision is refreshingly unpretentious and easy to live with. It's just so damn amenable. We'll be hanging on to it until it falls to pieces, which, knowing Honda, will probably be long after I've hung up my own motorcycling boots. As always, thanks for watching.